Good morning. Today I want to discuss a topic that I see very often in my office and something that can be quite scary to a lot of my patients when they're newly diagnosed. I sort of wanted to dispel the myth and kind of give you guys some really good information um, that you can take home and um, just kind of break it down to you guys. Um, so HPV, there are 200 to different types of HPV and um, it is very specific to humans. You're not going to find it in animals. It's a double-stranded uh, DNA virus that in, encapsulates or it incorporates into our epithelial tissue and it relies on the differentiation of our epithelial tissue in order for it to replicate. Um, and uh, it encodes for eight different types of genes and two proteins that we use for the vaccine. So sometimes patients hesitate to get the vaccine because they think that they're being infected with like a live virus. You're not being infected with the virus. You're being infected with a small little protein that the virus um, uh, makes. And that's how our body is able to say, hey, this thing is foreign. So when you get the vaccine, um, you're getting a, a protein portion of the virus so that your body recognizes it as foreign. Because the only way to really kind of fight off HPV is to have a healthy immune system. So we get vaccinated for polio, we get vaccinated for the chicken pox, that kind of stuff. So it's very similar. So please don't hesitate to get the vaccine. Um, Another thing is that it, in general, will resolve within 12 months. Now, if you have been diagnosed with the high-risk type and it lasts beyond the 12 months, it can take up to 10 years before it becomes a cancer. So what is the take-home message is we're not going to let it become a cancer if you come in and get your regular um, screening. Um, there are uh, two different types, or it affects two different types of tissue. One is uh, cutaneous, which would be like your skin, and the other one is mucosal, which would be the, uh, the vaginal wall, um, the penis, uh, the cervix, and um, the the type of virus tends to be a little bit more benign when it infects the skin. So um, cutaneous are things like uh, warts, plantar warts, flat warts, butcher warts. What are butcher warts? That's people who handle meat, poultry, uh, food. And um, uh, for example, the flat warts tend to be HPV 3 and 10. And then the um, butcher wart is HPV uh, 7 and 2. And there are uh, 40 different types of HPV that affect the anal genital region. That's a lot, 40. Um, uh, warts, uh, uh, genital warts tend to be HPV uh, 6 and 11. And uh, the cancer types, there are about 15 types of HPV that are the cancer type. And uh, those are um, the most uh, common type is HPV 16. Now, a little bit of epithelial epidemiology with this is that um, HPV is the fourth uh, leading cause of uh, cancer in uh, women. Uh, 530,000 cases are diagnosed each year worldwide and it accounts for 260,000 deaths, cancer deaths each, um, each year. Um, HPV 16 tends to be about 50% of those diagnosed with uh, cancer with HPV 18 being about 20% and then followed by the other ones, 31, 33, 45, uh, 52, and 58, accounting for about 19%. Uh, genital warts tend to affect younger uh, patients. Um, so normally we see it in 17 to 33 year olds. And, um, and again, like I said, that tends to be HPV 6 and 11. Anal Anal uh, infections with HPV tend to be um, six, HPV 16 and 18, and oral um, HPV also tends to be um, 16 and 18. You can get respiratory papillomatosis, um, which we see in children, and that is usually 
um, believed to be passed through the um, uh, vaginal canal at the time of, uh, of birth. And there's a, a rare type of HPV, which is called Bowen's disease. And Bowen's tend to, tends to be pretty high grade. Um, and uh, you can get it on your fingers, your toes. You can get it on uh, the, the palms of your hands, the soles of your feet, and also in the um, genital region. Um, uh, there is no FDA approved test for men, surprisingly. The only FDA approved test for HPV is a cervical swab in uh, women. And uh, most of the testing that we have in men is for research purposes um, only. Um, the um, uh, epidemiology, epidemiology is that about 80% of women uh, and men will be exposed to HPV at some point in their life if they're sexually active. Um, and the impact of the vaccine has, we've drastically seen a reduction in the amount of HPV associated cancers. Um, just to give you guys an example, the reduction was 86% in females who were age um, 14 to 19 and 71% in females who were age 20 to 24. Um, the prevalence is really high among women with their first sexual encounter. They did a study with college females and they found that the uh, prevalence of HPV increased by 29% with just their first male uh, encounter. And uh, by three years, that number went up to about 50%. Um, That's pretty high. Um, the incidence tends, tends to be pretty much the same among uh, black and white females. However, um, black females tend to have the more virulent uh, forms of HPV, which are the 16 and 18. Um, and then we do see a decline in HPV after the age of 25. That, in general, probably tends to be with, um, you know, at that point, having a more steady monogamous relationship, possibly getting married. Um, and so that we see a decline. And surprisingly, we see a small little peak um, after menopause. So menopausal females or, you know, Married females are not beyond uh, getting exposed. Sometimes if there is infidelity, we see a, a rise in the HPV. And uh, the male prevalence is about 73%. So, you know, one of the things that I always get asked is like, how can my partner be checked? And um, it's really sad because they're truly, like I said before, there isn't really a test, but the prevalence of HPV among males is very high. Obviously, we're getting it from somewhere. Um, and uh, anal infection tends to be very common in uh, not just people who have anal intercourse, but uh, just in general, if you're using toys, um, it tends to be pretty high in men who have sex with men. So about 53% prevalence of HPV uh, uh, in our uh, gay community. Um, Smoking and drinking alcohol tends to increase the virulence of the HPV and also uh, in men having uh, a high number of female partners uh, tends to increase um, the HPV in men. Uh, again, in men, clearing the virus takes about eight months to a year and um, it looks like uh, the oncogenic type tends to vary by region with sub-Saharan Africa having the highest prevalence of the oncogenic types, which are 16 and 18. Um, the risk decreases in men with marriage and it also um, decreases with uh, circumcision. And this was a big surprise to me, but they say that um, there was no correlation with condom use, which to me is, is a, a little surprising, but not really because HPV is transferred through skin to skin contact. Um, 
the highest prevalence of HPV among men is not in the urethra. It's actually in the shaft of the penis and on the testicles. So they've done swabs and it looks like um, it's highest in that, not so much in the urethra and in the semen. Um, Oral pharyngeal, so you know people get oral cancers that um, has been associated with HPV, um, and um, it, it, it isn't necessarily associated with oral sex. You can also get it with um, kissing, so open mouth kissing. So in summary, um, human papillomavirus, double-stranded DNA, it only infects uh, humans. There's two different types, cutaneous and uh, mucosal. And the, um, the um, uh, less virulent types tend to be the, um, the cutaneous. Um, globally, um, anal genital HPV is the most common uh, sexually transmitted infection. And the pre uh, the peak prevalence tends to be in the first uh, decade after your first sexual debut. Um, uh, worldwide, the prevalence of genital HPV among females is about uh, 10%, and uh, with um, HPV 16 being the most common, which is kind of scary because that's the most virulent. Um, so as with other sexually transmitted uh, infections, um, persons with multiple sexual partners are at the greatest uh, risk though, than those with stable monogamous uh, relationships. Um, and individuals with um, new partners tend to be at greatest risk as opposed to those with long-term partners. Um, the prevalence of oropharyngeal HPV infection is highest in men than in women, um, but overall it's lower than uh, anal genital infections. Um, HPV detection is more common among men and women with HIV, and that is um, pretty intuitive because uh, clearance of HPV relies on a healthy immune system and HIV tends to affect our immune system. So um, anyway, I hope you found this information useful. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to comment uh, below and I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Take care and have a good day.